Welcome to the Studio African Utility Week. I'm Rose Bundock and I'm joined now by Jesper Dogor, uh, Senior Vice President of Global Marketing at Canstrop. Welcome. Thank you. Canstrop in Africa. What's the, uh, what's the message that you're bringing to this show? Well, first of all, uh, we are here also to, to learn and hear about the challenges in Africa. We've been here for quite a while. And, and what Camstra, uh, you can say the message we bring to Africa is that as a company focusing on, on metering solutions, uh, we basically are able to provide three benefits for, for utilities. So the first value we create is, is focusing on trust between the utility and the consumer. Uh, so from the consumer side, am I able to actually understand and, and check that what I'm built is what I've consumed? Is the meter 100% accurate and doable through the time? And from the utility point of view, it's to secure that it's not possible to cheat, that I actually are able to invoice all the things that I deliver. Uh, the other thing is waste. There's a lot of waste in the grid. Uh, when we're talking about water utilities, there's a lot of leakage. How do you detect that leakage either in the grid or on the consumer side and act on that immediately? And then the, the last point is uh, to involve the consumer in being part of the solution. So if you have scarcity of energy or scarcity of water, you can actually involve the consumer in being responsible and, and protecting or taking care of what is available. So that are the three main things that, that Camstub is, is supporting with. Okay. So you've brought over your electricity and water metering technology. Yes. Which, uh, where do you see the most opportunity in Africa? Will smart water networks suddenly you know, become bigger than electricity networks? What's the... Smart water networks is lacking behind of electricity networks, yeah. but they will come. And uh, I think there will probably be a delay of, of three to five years before you see them on the same level. But water is becoming a bigger and bigger problem because without water, there's a lot of things that just doesn't work, considering farming, basically people need water every day. What about globally? I mean, we're seeing mandated water, you know, restrictions in California. Yeah. You know, perhaps for the first time. Yeah. You know, will this, will that kind of drive this smart water network uh, industry? Yeah. You have California as one example. I just uh, flew in from Sao Paulo in Brazil. Uh, their water reservoir is, is extremely low. We are talking 20% at the end end of the rain season. Um, so. So we have the same problem in India where their water supply is one hour per week. Um, so there's a really big need for solutions that can, you can say, reduce these problems. And, and their smart water metering is, is one of the solutions that, that they need to grab for. And you mentioned about you know, the consumer and making the consumer involved. Yes. Um, is it easier to involve them in electricity than with water? Uh, do you have kind of... Do you see utilities using different approaches? That you can say, we have to think about how the consumer thinks. Because for a lot of consumers, it's about what do I have to pay? And very often, the, the, the bill for water is so much smaller than the bill for electricity. So from that point of view, it's easier to get them involved in about saving electricity. But there, when there's scarcity, when there's not enough, then it's another thing. And, and what really works well is to, to have in-home displays or to provide data available on, the, on the, uh, the website that they're able to follow their consumption. So that's part of what helps. What, what really helps a lot is when you involve pricing. So use dynamic pricing. So basically, the less water you have, the more expensive it is. That triggers action from the consumers. Is there potential in the way that um, sensors are being used to automate the home to reduce electricity consumption? Is there that potential with water? So, so you're not purely reliant on the consumer, you perhaps have a smart tap or something like that. Is that something that's kind of in development? I mean, it's, it's, it's a very interesting question because you see homes uh, using solar panels or, or generators to, to solve the problem. Uh, and of course, you could collect rainwater. Uh, but when you do that, you also start to have other problems with water quality. Because if you have these big tanks of water and you're not controlling the quality of the water going into the tank, you, you, you start to get problems with people getting sick or mm. as they have in Latin America, they, they, these big water tanks become actually their nest for mosquitoes or other bugs. Okay. Um, so 
you can say the solution is not right there to actually provide a good a good solution for for drinking water. Mm. So at this stage, the consumer can't you know get as involved as with power generation. No, but what they can do is they can reduce their consumption of water. Uh, and if they're aware, you can say how much. I mean, it's for 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 the one consumer, it's. It's, it's not, uh, you can say, um, I'll put it the other way around. You can say, you have as a consumer to think that you're part of a community. Mm. And if I reduce my consumption of water, there will be water enough for everybody. Okay. And if I'm not responsible, then everybody has a problem mm. halfway through the season that the water is not there. And is that the kind of messaging that you see and you know, water utilities putting out there? That it's, this is our everyone's well it's, it's it's part of the messaging that they send out and where they would like the consumers involved but i think a very big part of the solution is also to focus on the waste in the system mm. to be able to identify where do we have leakage in the system that you don't have to reinvest the whole grid that you can actually size your investment where you have the problem and we see the same thing going on in the electricity grid when you have a lot of uh, renewable energy you cannot control uh, the production of energy, but you can actually route uh, how the energy moves in, 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 in your grid. And in that way, you avoid to, you can say, reinvest in all your transformer station. You can just either use the, the, the uh, balancing your network with, with the resources you have, or you can have fewer investments. Speaking more broadly now, um, electricity and water meters, what yeah. trends are you seeing in functionality? Well, in terms of, uh, of functionality, basically there's, in, in different regions, there's different needs. So what we see in Africa is there's a lot of focus on uh, prepayment. There's a lot of focus on fraud, to avoid fraud. Uh, so the way we go about it is we see this continuously will develop because we provide an infrastructure that enables new opportunities. So the way we have solved that is to make sure that we can actually operate the firmware of the meter. So I think when you and I are talking two years from now, it is we have solved the problems of today and we're looking at the problems of tomorrow, which we might not be able to predict. So you have to be able to operate mm -hmm. the, the functionality of the meter remotely, instead of, you can say, that you every five or seven years have to replace meters because mm -hmm. nobody can afford that. And the big question seems to be the communication technology. Yes. Do you, you know, opt for RF or cellular or PLC, what, what's Cam Stokes uh, position on that? Yeah, our, our strategy is to focus on, on radio technology. We have a, a very good working radio mesh technology. Mm -hmm. We can provide a wall-to-wall -wall secure communication line to the meter. Uh, we have a 99.9% 9 .9 meter reading from the Nordic Greenland okay. to the south of Chile, hosted in Denmark. Right. So we know how to do those things, okay. but I think the future will have you can say multiple ways of, of communicating. Uh, so for that reason, we are partnering up with tailor companies and, and other technology mm. providers, having a, a very open uh, philosophy partnering with them. So I think we'll see multiple ways of communicating uh, in the future. And do you have any uh, rollouts happening at the moment? That you'd be yeah, happy we to we have a lot of rollouts going on in the moment. Uh, I think one of the more interesting rollouts going on right now is uh, in the city of Copenhagen, uh, with one million houses uh, having smart meters. Okay. Um, and in that rollout, it's basically, you can say, Dong, which is the utility, mm. have decided that they're not buying a certain technology. They're buying a solution over 15 years. And they were searching for what is the most competitive setup for a smart metering technology there. Um, so we do everything for them, from installing the meter, hosting the data, communicating to the uh, homeowners, uh, and secure that everything runs smoothly. And do you find that energy companies are getting the maximum benefit from the metering technology? Not, we, I, <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, we are not there where we provide the maximum yet, but I mm. do see a lot of utilities take this very seriously and they're, they're moving forward with, with good speed. Uh, but I think the, the potential to be unlocked is still very, very yeah. big. I think there was a study in the US which suggested that most utilities still find out about outages from customer calls, even though those particular utilities have smart meters in their territories, which kind of suggests that they're not 
fully utilising the benefits and I just wondered if that's a kind it's, of industry-wide it's, it's changing the world of the utility a lot because as soon as they move into to, to this form of technology they're also moving into a space where things happen a lot faster they're, they're moving into a space where interacting with the consumer through you can say online communication having a lot of data it, it, it sets new challenges so it's I think it's also about providing a technology and changing the, the competences and, and mindset in the utilities to, to harvest those utilities. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do is basically to, to be the bridge that share knowledge from one utility to other utilities. So we go out and, and interview utilities after they have implemented metering solutions, okay. asking what are the challenges, what are the benefits, and we're trying to, to bring that knowledge to other utilities, uh, have them visiting each other across countries, uh, because very often they interact inside the country mm. and they don't inspire each other across countries. Um, sometimes it's visiting each other, sometimes it's just setting up a virtual meeting. Okay. And, and we think that works really well because when they talk together, they're also addressing the challenges that we are not maybe, you can say, facing as, as our scope. Yeah. And there's been a lot of talk here, I'm just bringing back to Africa and African Unity yeah. Week, there's been a lot of talk about Africa as open for business. Yes. When will Africa be truly open for metering business? When, when do you sort of predict well, I, there'll, be, there'll be larger scale rollouts? Larger scale rollouts. Um, I, I'm, as I said previously, I, I still think that we are at the level where it's, it's the business case that defines when do you go for smart metering. Um, and it's also, you can say, how far-sighted are you? Are you thinking a 15 years perspective uh, and, and considering your investment over 15 years? Because then smart metering provides a value creation that you cannot do with, with you can say, traditional metering technology. And then it's what's really make Africa, you can say, a big scale uh, metering market. I think that has a lot to do with the politicians to prioritize infrastructure, to say, we need to get the infrastructure right in order to make sure that Africa can utilize the, the potential that is in, in this continent. And I cannot, I'm sorry, I cannot predict when that will happen, but for sure, Kamsa will be there when that happens. Okay, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you yeah, for your Yeah, you're comments. welcome. Thanks a lot. That's all for now, and uh, thanks for watching.